How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. It's time to get into some animation, time to get that imagination all revved up, get into some creativity, and it's time to get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from Paolo Serpieri. Again, if I'm pronouncing this, as always, comments down below. Let me know. Uh, I love his work. He is so wonderful. He kind of has a, a little bit of a Mobius feel uh, to some of his work. And uh, just kind of an FYI, if you're younger, um, some of his work might not be suitable until you get a little bit older. Um, but check out this, how creative is it? he is. I love his, his use of color. I think his imagination is just top notch. Um, the way that he creates his forms, it's just really, really interesting. I love his line work. Uh, this, this pose right here, the silhouette and the composition and layout of everything is just so beautiful. I love the silhouettes here. Uh, this way that he has a little bit of drag and weight on the tip of the gun that's protruding out of that straight arm there is really, really wonderful. You get the wind blowing his hat off here, the strength of the hold of that pose right there, and then the anatomy of the horse is spot on as well. Just a, a great, great piece overall. I really like this one. Kind of, like I said, it reminds me a lot of um, Jean Girard, uh, I think it's the Azark um, piece, which I'm a huge fan of also kind of has a kind of a Miyazaki um, feel from kind of the uh, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind kind of feel too. Love this stuff. I love these. So, the amount of detail that has to go into each one of these is just phenomenal. It makes me want to stop doing everything I'm doing and just spend more time uh, drawing all the time. Which if I always feel, uh, and this is something that I try to impart, but you know, I have years and years and years to go before I'm there yet, but uh, if you find someone's work who makes you want to work more, that that's really the key as uh, creative to creative with uh, verses. And again, another wonderful piece. Yeah. Uh, when, uh, I know that I found someone whose work I really love when it's hard for me to even put into words um, how much I love their stuff and what it is that I that I love about it so much um, and I think that's you know that goes back to that same old phrase the picture is worth a thousand words um, but let's go ahead and take a look at a uh, quote that I was able to find from him now um, I believe he's, he's Italian um, and there's not a ton of information that's translated into English so this is a, a bit of a translation but I think the, the root of what he was uh, saying gets across, at least. Again, I'm, I don't speak Italian, but I think it is. Um, so be honest with what I do. I search in me, my fears, my anxieties, and my fantasies. He's talking about his process and how he gets you know, such great work out. And you know, talks about honesty and then including and in exploiting or delving into, you know, his, the things that he's scared of and putting them out on paper and not being afraid of it but being honest with what it is and his anxiety and his you know his fantasy is what he's looking forward to what he imagines what he dreams all that kind of stuff and I think when you can be that honest with your your work and the things that you do um, then it can start to resonate with people yeah let's go ahead and get into some animation I don't think I could really say it better than, than that even though I realize it's translated, so probably some of the eloquency, eloquence, eloquence, man, I can't speak today. Uh, so if you're not familiar with what we'll be doing for the rest of the video, I go off and I find a rig that I've never used before. It's a free resource for you guys to play around with as well and uh, kind of go from there a little bit of over the shoulder, just hang out with me while I animate a little bit of talking through the process. Um, 48 frames, give or take, is kind of the window we look in and try to keep it within an hour. Um, so we can't always go into too in-depth animation, but we got something each and every day to push ourselves. And the main goal of doing these videos is to hopefully encourage you guys and inspire you to go off and create your own stuff each and every day. And also to make you feel like you're not alone in your art day, that there's someone else uh, going through those wins and those losses, those failures and those successes. And uh, to hopefully keep you motivated and keep you encouraged to uh, continue to take another step in your journey towards mastering whatever medium it is each and every day. So let's go ahead and play. Like I said, apologies, I kind of am just off it on my speech today. Don't know where that's coming from. 
But I was thinking for, for today's video, maybe what if I get into some animation, this will help. Uh, we'll do like a spider walking on uh, a little bit of web. So let's see if we can maybe do something like that. And let's rotate this that way, 90 degrees. Pop it right in the middle here. Uh, assign a new material onto it. Put a uh, Lambert on there. And we'll make it a little bit lighter. And we'll also make it a little more transparent. And I think we'll probably... Mm, I want to be able to see it, so I don't want to make it too thin. I want to make it a little bit thinner than that, because we're trying to say like it would be a strand of the web or something that we'd be walking on and let's go ahead and start getting into our posing here for how we're going to approach this you know what is there any contours that we have for those arms i'm not quite sure so can we do any rotation This is going to be fun because it's, you know, we have to keep it right along this web, so that'll add a little bit of um, difference than we uh, normally, just something different that we is thrown in there at us that we have to play around with. And let's bring this on and bring it in here. And we'll bring it out there. To start, good place to start with. And I think we'll probably do it upside down as well. There we go. So maybe we'll pull the body up a little bit here. And let's do a little bit of tweaking in the body as well. So let's go ahead and save our file. We are using Autodesk Maya 2014 for today's video. For more information on that and all the stuff uh, we've talked about so far, check out the links in the description below. And let's go ahead and get started. So let's make sure we just have 
um, our nerve curves, nerve surfaces, and our polygon selected so we don't end up keying anything we don't need to. Let's turn that little grid off and set our frame range. Should we do a cycle or do we want to actually move this guy along? Let's actually move him. So we'll go here and then we'll set everything up here and we'll get started. cycle would have been easier but I think this will be more more challenging for sure so let's go there 24 and bring those over there and we'll bring the body forward here something different with them eventually but and then we want to grab this foot and that back foot right and that foot and that foot We're going to want to pull it's just this one forward again. Bring the body forward. Let's see. All right. Yeah, this is going to take a lot of polish and working through. But we've got to get, we've got to start somewhere. So we'll grab these two. something like that. Again, we're just kind of trying to build the foundation here. Okay. So this one. side so keep 
forward at six. And hold it to 18. And forward at 30. And hold it to 42. And then back. the base is finally working so let's uh so we got the the bulk of the information that we need to make this work and now we can actually tweak it and get it to uh work correct so let's look at our graph editor here and let's look at our translate uh, z that's going to be the movement from screen left to screen right and let's make that a constant so we don't have the slow ins and slow outs or jerkiness that we had in there before raise that one up and then actually get one in here let's just go back and rekey everything so we keep our uh, all of our attributes keyed here so let's start with it up so it'd be like mid move there and then it moves down start off with it lower. And then bring it forward here. seems to really kick up really high. I actually think it's the translate Z though, that's the problem. So if you see here, we've got a little move, then a big move, then a little move. So I realize that's only half of it, but I think that's probably where our problem is. So let's see that now. Is up there. Eight. 
tension should be higher for where it's lifting out to. Before we go anywhere, let's go ahead and lock in all of our main keys here. just be too high, so I'll lower those a little bit more. Yeah. And let's save the translate keys and let's on that first one. Alright, let's go ahead and save our file. It's starting to work now. It's getting to the point where it was a little funky, but I think we're starting to come together somewhere. So let's look at these front feet. I'm going to hold there. Um, before we go anywhere, let's make sure we go and go back and hit S on our keyboard to lock in each one of these main keys. And let's start lifting it up to get our passing positions here. Lift that up. Let's see. All right. It might be a little too high, but we'll see. We'll go ahead and go to the other side, and we're going to lock in all the keys there. And then we'll lift it up a little bit here. compare the height of those two steps so they're a little more balanced. Doesn't have to be exact, but somewhere a little more than what we have now. Let's see. Alright, and let's look at the back steps now. Uh, let's go back in and we'll lock in all of our main keys and instead of having this one be on sixes, let's have this be on fours as it's going to uh, maybe be on a seven where it has its highest point. It's a little bit heavier of a step. It's a fourth range from the contact is where it lifts up. Look at 
this one. Let me go back in and hit S on our keyboard so we're locking in all of our attributes here. And we'll go four frames from the contact as our lift up. Let's look at our transient Z. This one always feels a little bit too far back, so let's push it in a little bit more. And this one feels a little bit too far in, so let's push it back a little bit more. And then let's take our starting to work together. Now let's go ahead and look at uh, the root here. Let's go ahead and go down 6, up 12, down, up, down, up, down, and back up. I don't know that we need it to be that busy, so I'll probably cut that in half, but let's see how it feels once I balance it out a little bit. there. So that won't go to favor the uh, furthest back planted foot there. And we'll balance that out a little bit better. Okay, let's see how that feels now. Too, like there's too much movement on it, so let's cut it about half. Yeah, it feels like there's probably still a little too much in the front as well. it out so we're not favoring the left or the right side.
section to favor the front so that the back can play off of that a little bit better. Okay, yeah, that offset it a bit, so now I probably need to amp it back up, and we want to balance that out as well. Don't need as much movement there. Probably somewhere. Keep it at rotate Y, but let's minimize it though. And we'll offset it by doing this one back on the first frame here. So we'll go that way, and that way, that way, that way, and back again. We could tone down both sections, but I think that works. All right. And we can tone down this one a little bit more. And let's see how it feels now. A little bit of wiggle in that back section. section. We'll offset it in the back. Okay, and then we'll look at this portion. So they go at mm -hmm. yeah, that's about right. And then let's just keep this first one here so you can see. Couple more keys here. And we'll ask for another one. Okay. And we'll probably have to minimize this even more, but we'll get it working here so we can loosen up those portions of the body a little bit more. way over the top. It's probably about 50% of what we have. So let's grab both of those and let's clean that up. Now it plays off the movement of the middle section by dragging just a little bit, about three frames behind what the movement of the middle section is doing. See that head feels all right now. And we could probably even do a little bit more section. 
section and let's uh, tighten that down as well. Kind of like the back one being a little bit more exaggerated than the front though. one and we'll rotate it up here and down there and up here and down there up here and down there up here and down there okay now we have even more looseness in the back end here but it's still a little too busy so I'll cut it back to probably about 50% of what we had there on the middle portion here and balance out the end. Let's tone this one down. Let's see how that feels now. Yeah, and we can still do a little bit less just on the base. Guy. Do a little bit of rotation there as well. Up and back. Up and back. Up and back. And up again, I guess. It's probably a little over the top, so we'll scale it back a little bit more. It's always uh, good to overshoot and pull back. Make sure it's working and then uh, and scale it back to where it needs to be versus taking little steps and taking like 50 little steps rather than really overshoot it and then scale it back. here as well. This feels a little too over the top now that we have both of those going. Maybe ramp up the rotate Y a little bit more. It's a little more sway. frames I think so we'll go see if they work together or if they work yeah okay so we'll do each one so in out in out in out in out in and out guy. We'll go in here, 
this is nice because it'll give us different timing. Everything else is kind of working on a base three or base six, and this would be a base four. So it kind of gives us a different amount of timing for our shot to play with too. Give us a little more texture. Yeah, let's look at the inside of these guys. see if I did that right. Sure it's gonna be too much, but we'll check it out here. Let's see. This actually not too bad. See that way this one feels very stiff. This one's got just that little bit of wiggle in there to loosen it up a little bit. Now we still want it to feel like it's a fang so it's not really wiggly but just so it's not so rigid because there would be some sort of cartilage or uh, muscle in between the bone there. Maybe we can still ramp it up a little bit more. Let's see. Yeah, feels better. Yeah, let's look at this guy. So we want to go out a little bit here and a little bit there. Plus it gives us a little more variety as well. And we'll go up and down with the inner portions to give us some more. And I like to go quick because insects are pretty quick. This is way too slow for an insect actually if we were really doing it. But there's something that we can get that will play together. These ones, should we go at the same time or should we do alternating? I think alternating would be more fun. Now let's do this one on three, so it's even quicker. Guess we'll do them together. We'll see, maybe I'll just offset it by a frame or two. This is probably too much movement for how quick it is. But we'll see. Let's see. Yeah. And I'm going to do the inverse on this one, so I'll flip it. exaggerate this one a little bit more. We toned it down a little too much compared to the other one. Let's look at this head controller. Do we want to do anything here? We're going to leave it alone. I was thinking there might be like an actual top of the jaw here. Well, maybe that's what it is. Let's play with it and let's see. No, it's the whole head. We already basically have that movement working here. 
there, so I don't want to like repeat that. work so much. I think it's a workable solution, but I'm not sure it's the best one we could have come up with. Let's see how long we've been going here. Okay, I've stopped for a while. Okay, so I put those a little too far back, so let's just take everything and push it forward just a little bit. the translate Y still. I'll tone those down a little bit more. Maybe I could also blend out the X a little bit. Let's start with busy. Okay. Maybe I can just lower them in Y a little bit more. Gives a little more gap so they're not as squished. So let's try and find both of those controllers here. back over. I think you'll see it a little bit more. Okay, so what we want to do is take universally and push them here a little bit lower so they'd be like on the very bottom of the... Yeah, that gives us a little more spread there. Let's get the transient keys. See if there's any hitches there. Nope. It's a little better at least. Maybe I'll look at the MIDI controllers here and make those so they're more of a constant. That might help as well. Sort of seeing that problem stem from. 
wish I could do something more with those. I'm pretty sure there are legs in the front, but there's no control for storming. These guys here. That's all right. But I think let's go ahead and create a different uh, background color just so we're not sitting at this looking at the same thing. Uh, let's create polygon primitives to do a cube. Switch back to our other perspective. That works. Definitely could spend another hour or so polishing this up and cleaning this up and mixing it up a little bit more. Probably if I were to go back in here, I'd probably speed it up so it'd be more on a base 10 system than a base 12. Just so it'd be a little bit quicker, but I think it, it's functional. So let's take a look back at where we started. We're looking at the beautiful work of Paolo Serpieri. And he said, be honest with what I do. I search in me, my fears, my anxieties, and my fantasies. And I really think for anything to be, um, you know, if you want to attribute your name to a piece of art or a piece of work that that's going to go on forever and have that lasting impact, it has to have honesty in it. And you have to be willing and open to, you know, show the flaws the things that you dream about, and you wish for, and you hope for, and you desire, and just try and be as honest as you can. I think it really um, makes something that you create with your imagination. If there's honesty behind it, it, it should resonate with other people. And I don't know. I think that's um, definitely something that can be hard to understand and to cope and to grasp and, and part of that you know learning process throughout your journey um, I remember one of the first um, when I first was was looking into getting into um, art and animation and all that stuff I, I talked to um, I sent a, a note out to a couple of people that I really liked their stuff and asked them for advice or anything and one of the ones that I got back was um, find your message and when I was first learning I was like I don't, know, I don't know that seems I wasn't really ready to hear that that portion yet but I think as I get um, further along in my journey and again I years and years away from ever mastering most of the people that I look up to or you know have bodies of work that are in their 60s or 70s or 80s or any of that kind of stuff that I really admire or they've been dead for a long time <laughs> either way um, but I think that's an important thing, you know, to try and be have honesty in your work and to try and have some sort of a, a theme or a message or a worldview or a perspective that you want to share with other people. And I mean, that's why um, usually throughout these videos, I always talk about hopefully encouraging you guys and inspiring you um, to at least take another step in your journey. And I think for at least with this um, series of videos, I think that's really and the, the honesty and the, the message and, and just being open to um, you know when, when I first started there weren't uh, tutorials or guides or watching someone animate from start to finish on a shot or and again like that these are uh, it's only 48 frames but uh, you know it gives you a taste if you're not sure what you want to do or if you're frustrated and alone in your animation world there's someone else out there you know kind of animating along beside you keeping you encouraged keeping you motivated you can do it i believe in you i love you guys lots and i'm rambling so i think i'm gonna wrap it up um you guys are amazing thanks for all the likes and subscribes hope you guys had fun doing this one i've been trying to do stuff that's a, a little bit uh a little bit more different each and every day um so if you guys have ide ideas or stuff that you want me to try or put out there. I know I need to do some lip sync and some fighting. I've had a couple of requests for that stuff. 
I uh, just want to kind of work through those those shots a little bit more in my head before I do something find a good rig that'll uh, be really malleable uh, it's a free resource for you guys too but again I'm getting rambly so I love you I think we'll wrap it up for today uh, I hope you're taking another step in your journey towards mastering whatever medium it is that you're passionate about and try to search inside yourself and uh, find your fears your anxieties your fantasies and be honest with uh, your work and with everyone in your everyday life and I love you guys lots we'll see you for some more animation tomorrow.